Donald Trump himself has criticized the U.N. in regards to Israel slamming the U.S. and other nations for voting to condemn settlement construction or abstaining from voting. But Trump is the one being criticized today under fire for this weekend, going after civil rights activist Congressman John Lewis. Lewis this weekend announced over uh, time that he would not attend Trump's inauguration because he does not, quote, regard Trump as a legitimate president in the wake of the Russia hacking scandal. In solidarity with John Lewis, our graphic has gotten so big and crowded we had to make two of them. 55 House Democrats are staying home this weekend. And let me bring in a California congressman who's just come out of his meeting deciding whether he will attend Donald Trump's inauguration. Democratic Congressman John Garamendi of California. Uh, let us hear it. Are you going? Or will you be at the inauguration or will you boycott it? I'll be there and I'll do my protests on the floor of the House, in committee, and frankly, on television, perhaps even with you today. Okay, so you're going. Um, tell yes. me what you think of your colleagues, 13 Californians alone, uh, who are saying, I'm not going for, for a whole host of reasons. Some of them saying, I won't dignify it with, I won't dignify him with this, or he's not legitimate. Uh, what do you think of that? Well, what I think is that our Constitution provides for the peaceful, transfer of power. That's extraordinarily important. You don't have to like the president, and certainly I've got very, very serious concerns about uh, Donald Trump, uh, which I've expressed in the past and I'm going to express again. But nonetheless, the past president, Bill Clinton, is going to be there, uh, and uh, we're certainly going to see Donald Trump's opponent. Hillary Clinton's going to be there, along with the leadership. This is an important transfer of power. Whether you like Trump or not, there's something much more important than Trump here, and that is the way in which our democracy functions. Uh, Trump's going to be a very serious problem, I think, for this nation. It's certainly going to be a problem for AT&T. And by the way, I was listening to your uh, earlier point about... Uh, CNN, yeah. maybe this is really about a conflict of interest because Donald Trump is in the television business. Is AT&T and their new cable set, a setup mm -hmm. actually going to make it more convenient for Trump's uh, show? I don't know. Or, uh, or maybe you we know ought what? to see and the tax returns. Charlie Gasparino has pointed that out and saying that some yeah. of his advisors, like Steve Bannon, have what could be considered a competitive, certainly a website. CNN's uh, digital footprint yeah. is huge and powerful and uh, obviously wouldn't be in Steve Bannon or Breitbart's uh, um, interest to, to have that even get stronger. But l let me just then f put a fine point on this and then we can go to uh, sure. the Secretary of the Interior candidate here. Sure. Uh, what do you think Democrats are, are gaining? by boycotting, if anything, because, again, if you're looking at what makes this country the best democracy on the planet, it's that we do have this peaceful transfer of power. We may not like it. We may not like who got chosen. But dang, you've got to stand by the person, at least in the initial stages, to see how they do and wish them the best. Well, we certainly would wish uh, good success all the way around, success in the Congress, success uh, in, the, uh, in all of the other uh, parts of our government. Uh, and we can be hopeful. But uh, everything we've seen, I mean, to get up in the morning at 4 o'clock in the morning and take on John Lewis uh, because of his statement, uh, and anybody else uh, raises some real questions about uh, the temperament mm -hmm. of the next president. Right. But I'm going to be hopeful, and I'm going to be there, and then I'm going to do my protest in the way that I was elected to do by my votes, uh, by my work in committee on the floor, and uh, speaking uh, out on issues uh, on television any place else. Well, you're, you're welcome here because we welcome many voices. Thank you. Uh, let me just get to something that's going on on Capitol Hill right this moment. And that is, of course, the confirmation hearings for Ryan Zinke to become uh, Secretary of the mm -hmm. Interior, a position you served. Uh, I don't think a lot right. of people know what that is. You know, it, it allow, you get to decide yeah. allowing drilling or mining on public lands, forest management. Um, you think this guy um, has the chops? So what kind of uh, skill set do you really need? Does this role require? Well, I do know uh, Zinke. I know him very well. We uh, tease each other about uh, UC Berkeley's football team versus the Oregon <laughs> school where he went to. We go back and forth. Neither of us were very successful this year. But, uh, but he's also, I think, a person that uh, values the outdoors. And the Department of Interior is the most, it's the most wonderful of all the departments because you're dealing with the national parks, uh, the Bureau of Land Management, the management of the forests uh, and the land. But it's also a place where there can be controversy because of the Endangered Species Act mm -hmm. and also right in uh, Zinke's 
backyard uh, the extract of coal from federal lands. Uh, these are issues that he'll deal with. Uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that because of his background, because of uh, how he was raised, uh, and uh, his love for the outdoors, and also his love for the public lands. He has fought against those that would privatize the public lands or turn them uh, back over to uh, the state governments. And I think he's going to hold firm on that. And I think uh, while he will probably have to deal with the issue of the mining of coal and uh, fracking and all of those, not probably, okay. he will have to deal with them, I, I think he hopefully will do it in a balanced way. Well, uh, that perspective just made a lot of people know more about this candidate, and, and I appreciate that. John Garamendi, congressman from California, who played, might I add, both offensive and defensive positions for Cal Bears, my alma mater. Go Bears. <laughs> oh, Bears, please do something. <laughs> please. Please. Be hopeful. Be hopeful <laughs> with the season coming. Hope springs eternal for the Berkeley Bears. Exactly. Uh, great to see you, Congressman.